Hi everyone, my name is Margaret and today I will be sharing a recent I-751 waiver success story. And to protect our client's confidentiality, I will be calling her Angela. She met her ex-husband when she was fairly young. She was about 21 and he was 18. They met at a college party. Her ex-husband, who I'll call Fernando, fell madly in love with her. She was this beautiful, confident, very charming woman. They dated for about a year and then they decided to get married. Within their first year of being newlyweds, they were both aspiring actors and they just had these crazy busy schedules. And this forced him to be away from home for very long periods of time. Our client Angela was also uh, dealing with insecurities, her being afraid of losing Fernando. And unfortunately in time, one of these insecurities turned out to be true as she found out that Fernando had um, an affair with another woman. Fernando had decided that he was no longer in love and broke things off with her. And around this time is when Angela came to our office for help. She was very disappointed. She was very stressed and sad, but nonetheless, you know, these immigration processes have a deadline, so she had to move forward. So we met with her, Joseph and Gabby did a strategy session and we prepared this um, checklist. We gathered affidavits. We also uh, included a letter from Fernando who was, um, you know, felt bad about the situation. He was no longer wanting a relationship, but he did have um, a lot of care for Angela and wanted to help her. So he was willing to write a letter for her. And sometimes these cases are very difficult. In a standard breakup, you're able to just move on, delete all of the messages and block this person. In Angela's case, she had to do the exact opposite. She had to dig up all of these messages. She had to bug her friends and ask them for favors or letters. And she had to just um, redig all of these very painful memories. Um, and it's all very raw. So we, we do have to be very uh, mindful and we also try to be uh, patient and um, just allow our clients to take the time that they need. We put on a strong case and we submitted it to USCIS. Eventually, after about three years, um, much to our surprise, we got what's called a request for evidence. Um, and the request for evidence was pretty standard. It was just asking for more evidence of a bona fide marriage. This can mean anything. Like sometimes they just want you to put in that extra effort. Sometimes maybe they need, you know, more time to process the case. An RFE for these cases is very challenging because by the time they get this RFE, it's already been another three years that they're not in this relationship. So it's pretty hard. Like most of the, the evidence that they had, we've already submitted in the initial filing. We were able to gather um, a little bit more evidence. Um, we updated the letters and we also made it a point to include a brief which explained, um, kind of reminded USCIS about the dynamics of their specific situation. They are a unique couple. Um, typically USCIS, they like to see all of those financial documents like the lease, the tax returns, the bank statements, but they had no money. So they don't have bank accounts. They were like living life on a whim, just pursuing their passion and, and their dreams. So we submitted the RFP and then um, we, they still had to appear for an interview, which again, to some people, it could be a little bit scary, but because we know um, Angela, we really thought that this was a good thing because now they could ask any clarifying questions. They can see her emotion. Maybe if you read something about a relationship, you might have doubts, but as soon as you hear like that trembling in their voice, then you, you automatically know that it, it was real. So at this stage, we, we helped prepare her for the interview. We gave her um, advice and how to kind of navigate these different questions, but ultimately just, you know, telling her to be truthful and reminding her that she had nothing to worry about. It sounds like very simple, but I like to remind clients that, you know, that they are saying the truth. And when you're saying the truth, there's nothing to worry about. So once she attended her interview, she was instantly approved and we were so happy for our team, but also for her to just finally be able to put this chapter aside and now she can delete those messages <laughs> and block them once and for all. Now she's moving forward and she's, you know, continuing to pursue her dreams and we're very happy for her. One of the takeaways is that even in the worst case scenario, that there is still hope. 
um, because sometimes clients will come to us and they'll say things like, I don't want an RFP and I don't want my case to take forever and I don't want an interview. And in this case, all of the above happened. <laughs> But it didn't mean, for example, that there would be a denial. It just meant that they just needed more for this case for whatever reason. And you just have to be patient. The good thing is that in these cases, you um, do have lawful status. So as long as you're, you know, you have to be patient, you have to be able to willing to go through all of the hoops um, and know that everything will work out. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you like this video. See you soon.